290 to Pelham Road is usually comfortable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, good luck. It took me a while to get here. <laughs> but I took back roads to avoid that. Uh, and it works well. <laughs> Shall we start? Sure. You ready? Yeah, I'm starting. Okay. Hey, y'all. Welcome to uh, Upstate South Carolina Linux Users Group. Uh, my name is Jace. Um, if you notice, I have a Southeast Linux Fest t shirt. We're going to have that coming up uh, June. Is it 12, 13, 14? 12, 13. 12, 13, that's right. Uh, the 11th is uh, uh, some other events. UbuCon, Fedora's having a conference, BSD's having um, certifications and stuff like that. All kinds of stuff. Um, DrupalCon is going to be here Friday, I think. Um, but I'll, I'll have someone talk about that later. Um, this weekend, uh, let's see, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is POSCon, the Palmetto Open Source Software Conference in Columbia. Um, I was hoping David Nally would be here to talk about that since he's given a presentation. But uh, uh, there's gonna be, he's going to be talking. There's going to be several others, including uh, John Maddock Hall, um, founder of Linux International, and um, um, Robert X. Cringely is giving a keynote at the beginning on Thursday. Um, they've got uh, different options for uh, you know three day, one day, two day pricing and that sort of thing. The uh, Southeast Linux Fest. You can have the option of going for free, or you can choose to, to pay and donate money to the foundation, get a t-shirt, and stuff like that. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm going to give a short talk on Vim syntax handling. I, uh, last month, uh, those of you that were here and have seen it online, um, you'll remember I was talking about VI, uh, the editor. Um, my, my favorite is Vim in particular. Uh, I talked a little bit about some of the features that Vim has over VI. In general and all the other VI clones. Um, uh, I still have some handouts. If anyone wants them, I'll just have you pass them around. And, uh, that was my, uh, uh, some um, little cheat sheets that I find very helpful. Uh, so anyway, so I'm not going to talk about how to edit VI because you can watch that online and you could have been here last month and saw it, but that's okay. So um, one of the, the beauties of uh, Vim, and one of the things that I like about it, is syntax highlight. So what is syntax highlight? Anyway. Yes? Sure, we're using a programming language or HTML or just by the Vim will display the things in different colors, keywords and stuff. And it is amazing, even without knowing what's going on, your subconscious picks it up like this. You know, there's something wrong there. You can code a lot faster if you see the different colors, and especially if you see something, uh, uh, you know, a syntax error will show up in, in bright red. Then you think, wait, well, okay, I did something wrong here. I need to fix it. I don't know what it is necessarily. Um, but, uh, with uh, most IDEs have syntax highlighting of some sort. Um, Vim is one of them. Um, so the, the the different syntaxes are coloring, uh, you know, italics and underlining, and um, Squiggle in the line and, and bold face and different things like that. So font alteration, that sort of thing. So how do you get uh, syntax highlighting to work in Vim? 
Well, there's the just works option, and that is you just launch a file with them and it's suddenly in, in color in syntax highlighting. Um, that's uh, usually the way it works uh, if you've got a good version of them. So you see right here, I'm, I'm, this, is, this is this page. In, uh, can you all read this first of all? Okay, so I, I've got the Wikipedia uh, syntax highlighting, uh, which I had to download from vim.org. It's that it doesn't come with it. It's not, I don't know, it's too new. But anyway, you put this in your local directory, in your .vim directory in your home, um, and then, yeah, you've got this. So uh, you see here, I've got um, the header, syntax highlighting um, is in purple, and there's another header, what it is, that's the a subheader, smaller. Um, you know, I've got bullets, uh, smaller bullets, and um, this is uh, the Wikipedia Vim syntax file has um, spell check. Because uh, usually what you're going to edit in Wikipedia, you want to have you know, proper spell. Um, so you'll see, um, you weren't here. <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> so you see here, I've got uh, a lot of uh, the words in, in red, bright red, those are misspellings. Or they're not in my dictionary, right? Um, GVM Etsy, over here you see in the uh, upper right, if I were to uh, if I were to just put a, a dot at the end, suddenly it works. Because that Etsy, it's etc. Abbreviation red, etc. Um, anyway, so this is the just works option. You just launch Vim and something works. Well, sometimes it doesn't work. And why does it not work? One of the, the main reason you want to check is to, does it ever work? If you bring up different kinds of files, different um, you know Bash scripts, PHP, Python, you know a, a make file, uh, FS tab, some sort of something that. Um, that Vim will understand it and have a syntax highlighting file for, and you never see syntax highlighting, then you need to check to make sure that uh, Vim was compiled with syntax on. Uh, the way you do that is um, if you're in Vim, you, the colon command version, and again, this is Vim, not VI, uh, will show you everything that was compiled with. And what you want to look for in particular is a plus syntax in the alphabetical order, so it's right there. So this one was compiled with syntax highlighting on it. Um, if you don't have that, uh, oh, another way to um, another way to check is from the command line vim version, and that will also show you your compile time options. <laughs> well, gracious, so I'm going to grab for syntax, and there it is. Okay, so you see that uh, plus syntax is one of the compile time options. This, the version that I have. Is the, the one that works. I got it. Uh, so um, I have found that uh, certain distributions they have a, a, a minimal vim or gvim and, um, and you know, everything and enhanced, and then they've got one that's kind of in the middle. By default, I think you should be the one in the middle unless you got a netbook like I had and, and it was minimal, right? Uh, so I did install on this Ubuntu. I think it was uh, vim enhanced was the package name. Uh, that may be a SUSE package name, I don't remember exactly which, but so you can either do that or you can compile Vim, GVim from source if you like. But, you know, but, um, now what if you do see some files in syntax highlighting and some not? Well that's usually an indication that Vim didn't correctly <coughs> identify what kind of a, what syntax to use for that file. Um, what you can do there, um, uh, there's the, usually um, Vim will know what kind of file syntax it is based on the file name. If it's a .c, it's a C file. If it's a .php, it's a PHP file. If it's a make file, it's a make a syntax, and that sort of thing. Um, and then there's tons of different uh, ones. Um, but uh, if you've got an, an odd name, if you've got like a, you know, main.c.old, for example, it doesn't know what an old file is, but you know that it's a C file. So you just, uh, what you do is you do a, a colon set and um, file type. And that will tell you what kind of a file that it thinks it is. Um, sometimes it's wrong, but sometimes it's empty. File type should, you see there at the bottom line, I got file type equals Wikipedia. And that's because I, I, I created a rule that says .wiki is a Wikipedia file. Um, now I can change that by typing set file type equals whatever I think it is. So if, I'm, if I think that it's a PHP file, suddenly the syntax highlighting color has changed. And you see, I've got mostly white and just uh, color coding of the word directory, 
um, the XML code tags, the XML U tag. If I were to change this to uh, file tab equals HTML, um, you can see that, uh, well, about the same thing happened there. Um, so that's what you do. You, do, you type set, set space um, file type equals, and then the file type. Um, but how do you know um, what syntax is supported in Vim? Well, uh, usually the, the uh, enhanced version of Vim has tons of different syntax files. Um, let me escape here. And that is in the, not that directory, in the user share Vim, Vim 72 syntax. Wherever the Vim home is, uh, syntax. Um, that's This is the file path for Ubuntu, uh, probably a Debian. Uh, it's going to be similar. Um, it's, it's wherever they decide that they want to put all the data files for. Uh, yeah. uh, so if you look here, if I do a listing, I've got all these different syntaxes that it knows. Um, I'm going to whittle that down by, you see I got an echo star, pipe it to sed, and, and rip out the dot vim. So these are the file types, the syntaxes that it understands. And you see it scroll off the screen. Uh, so I'm going to go up and show you who they are. It's a, you know, HTML, Coba, Coco, Cobol, Seashell, Group, Grub, Hex, Masm, you know, Man Page, Mush, Mutt, Enroth, uh, you know, tons of them. And people are making syntax files all the time. Like I said, Wikipedia has its own syntax file. Um, you have to go to vim.org and search in the, uh, the wiki for it. But it's not a big deal. So these are the different file types. Uh, even, <laughs> anybody heard of white space? The programming language? Programming language white space. It's just tabs, spaces, character terms, line feeds. Um, what are the other white space characters? But that's the programming language. It's just spaces and tabs and new lines. It's better, Turing complete, apparently. You better have a good uh, syntax highlighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what it does is it, you wouldn't be able to see anything. It, it, colors, it colors the spaces different than the tabs. Yeah. It's, it's, different. it's interesting. OK, so where are we at? Uh, all right, so <coughs> I'm actually going quite fast, and that's cool. Um, so here's some in other information. Um, uh, if you type the word syntax at the at the, um, col the colon command syntax, this will show you what are the syntax definitions for this syntax file. So you see a an HTML special character is going to be in red with a black background, and it's this match, this square here expression. Uh, you've got an HTML string. So Wikipedia understands HTML, so it includes HTML first. Then it does its own things. Uh, you know, it's all the HTML. So here's you know, regular HTML tags, DD, DL, applet, you know, all the different ones. Uh, header. It also understands um, JavaScript and CSS. Well, that's, I think it's part of the HTML, actually. Uh, then it includes the JavaScript. I think HTML includes JavaScript, so that's probably why it's there. Um, VB. Hey, I didn't know that was there. Uh, so it understands VB methods and such. CSS. Probably boring you now. Oh, shoot. Um, oh, no, my font type is HTML. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so there's, that's a lot more help. So I type syntax and HTML stuff. Wiki stuff, tech stuff, because um, Wikipedia understands tech or can at least. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Spelling. Uh, so that's our thing. Is okay. the purple highlighted? Yeah, um, for for Wikipedia, the purple means um, it's a header. So you see, uh, I've got the word uh, other info and uh, demo. In the wiki page, other info is the, is the title here of, my, of this section. Demo is the second title of this section. That's just. Well, it's Vim, the word Vim highlighted. 
Yeah, uh, that's misspelled. It's not in my dictionary. I'll go to the red ones. Red's misspelled. Yes. Oh, Vim's purple. Yeah, I don't know why that is. <laughs> well, it's probably just some special keyword. So let's see what syntax. Purple could be a uh, purple background and what was it, white foreground? Purple background, white foreground. I was actually wondering that myself. Purple background. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it's just a keyword that Ben understands all. Maybe it was self-aware. Self-aware. Now uh, the syntax. Um, so that's what the syntax. Is. You know, this means that you want to say like a you know comment is this color. Uh, Conditional is this color, uh, and if is this color, that sort of thing. Um, and each each language is going to have its own thing. Markup language is going to be different, of course. Um, then you've got uh, another thing, highlight, and that shows you only what the colors are. So the, the keyword special key is uh, blue with back with no uh, background. Um, you see it's bold, um, and, and a color terminal is bold. Uh, the oh, I'm sorry, it's cyan. Um, but these are just what the colors are for the different types of um, syntax items. Uh, you know, search is going to be in, in yellow. Um, that sort of thing. Um, there, down here at the bottom, then you see HTML link to other things. So uh, an HTML string links to a string. A string is already color defined, so you define that HTML string is what same colors as a string. String. So these are the, um, the built-in ones that it enhances. Uh, you know, string, debug, tag. The ones with a, a leader in front of them are for that language. Now, usually you want to have like um, HTML comment is links to comment, right? So you've got XML comment links to comment. Wiki comment links to comments, that sort of thing. Um, just as uh, a way of keeping you know, your head straight. But X, 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 is that a, an example of what it would look like? Right. These are the, the, col the middle column is what it would look like, what the text looks like. So you see some of them have no background, some of them have like a red background or other color backgrounds. Okay, that's, uh, that's highlighting. Uh, so if you're, if you're ever, you know, editing a file and you don't know what this color means, you can look it up one, either of those two different ways. Um, one other thing that uh, you want to be aware of is if you're like me and you prefer white on black for your terminal, you see I have black background and white foreground because, because you can see it better. Some people, and in fact all terminals that I seem to ever come across, have black on white, which makes no sense to me, but I have to change it and so I do. Um, what you want to do then, um, for me, whenever I go into that, it's going to have um, the background be um, light by default. So I go and then in my VimRC set background to dark. So if you see here, Set the background, and you see I'm doing shortcuts. You know, the whole word is set, and the whole word is background. And I'm just doing BG. For short. Background equals dark. The other one is uh, background equals light. Equals light. And watch the colors. They changed to be more of a better contrast for the the white background and the dark foreground. Um, so if I go over here and edit this file now. Right. I'm going to edit the file. Bring it up in GVM. Okay. So it's by default dark on, on, on light. So I set background equal light and suddenly I can read it. You see here, it's uh, code folding as well, or folding. Um, that's another topic for another day. But anyway, um, so if I were to change, uh, e e so it makes it easier to read um, in, in, in the different background colors. That's one of the things you want to be aware of. If you can't read the hot side text tiling, it makes, it's no good for you. Um, so it's not that you're changing the background, it's that you're telling it what the background is. You're telling what the background is, yes. So if you use um, like slate, which is a dark background. Now it looks blah. Um, I set the background to dark. Well, no, it didn't it knew that because of the color code. Okay, well, never mind. 
It still looks red. <laughs> but you'll notice too um, that the color scheme is slightly different. Um, in in GVIM, I've got yellow for the, the headers, and in command line VIM, I've got purple. Uh, code is blue, the word code is blue, and, and code is yellow here. So um, you got a, a little red squiggly on the spelling mistakes. Um, so that's what that is. Does no. that bother you that two versions are different colors? It doesn't bother me. Um, I, you know, it's just it's just the fact that there is a different color for each item that is important. You know, it, 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 I, it, I never really think about that. You know, because it's it's just I know that I'm I'm not attuned to blue meaning an if, uh, you know, red meaning an else, and that sort of thing. Is it because they have different RC files? Um, uh, that's part of it, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. And I, I think uh, in your syntax, you can tell it what high, highlight colors are. So if you see the highlight, you know, suddenly all these are different. Um, but you've got one for terminal, you've got one for color terminal. Um, so if you have a, just a black and white terminal or a green terminal, for example, it's just going to do a different shade of green or white for the syntax. Yes. Is GVIM and the command line VIM, uh, do they have, are they, <clears throat> these formats compatible? Like can you just link one file to the other if you wanted to? Yeah, yeah, and in fact uh, usually what I do is uh, um, I source my VIMRC in my GVIMRC because my GVIMRC I'm going to want to set the background color. There is no background color in, or a color scheme. There is no color scheme in command line VIM. Uh, you see here I've got the, the peach puff. It's set to peach puff. Oh, I don't have peach puff. Um, or I guess it did. Uh, color. That's more. See, now that's purple. Just like the other one. It's a little brighter, but uh, it's about the same. But it's a different font, too. Uh, you can set fonts in GVIM. You can't. You, you set it in your terminal, in, ex in your external, or whatever. Your command line. Um, but you don't set that in VIM. So usually I have my GVIM. Um, with the color scheme, the font, um, you know, whether I, usually I say numbering and more columns, 120 instead of 80 columns, um, and then I source my VIM So, um, so one of the important, one of the helpful things about syntax highlighting is, is printing it out, right? You want to do that with the hard copy command, uh, colon command. Uh, that's with the dot h, h a hard copy or dot or colon hard copy. That does a pinch, uh, does a printout, um, and by default, uh, Vim will command line Vim will send it to LPR if it's Unix like. Um, if it's Windows or Sidewind, it'll send it to LPT one, which doesn't exist in Windows seven. So, when you're like me and you want to use a real editor in a false operating system, you have to do a <laughs> to HTML. Um, what that does is it converts um, the current file to HTML and splits it in the top. You can save that, and it is the same color scheme that you got here. So be aware, if your paper is white and your background is black or dark, you want to change background color to dark, uh, light. Because it will print black? Because it will print of the, of the color scheme. Right? Um, so you can save this, pull it up in your web browser, just print from your web browser. Uh, GVIM also pulls up a, uh, a, a normal printer dialog depending on you know, whether it's you know, Windows uh, printer dialog or KDE printer dialog or GNOME printer dialog or that sort of thing. So that's that. Um, if uh, watch the browser and print. One other thing you need to be aware of if you use 2HTML, which I did not know, um, if you do have code, code folding, if you have folding on, it will just print the fold and not print the whole thing. Um, with all colon commands, or with most colon commands, you can give it a range. You can give it a line number, uh, you know, like I want only line 20, 20 hard copy. And that will only print line 20 to the print. You can do a range from 5 to 200, or 5 to, to comma dollar sign to the end, you know, from the, and the script the header, right? Um, that's, uh, that's hard copy. Uh, so. Now I'm just going to give a demo.
Is there any questions? I, I, I guess I kind of have to when giving demos. Are there any questions? One other thing that I've found to be useful is um, if I'm you know, editing a C++ file and it's supposed to print out HTML, all my strings have HTML. Right? So sometimes you can, I change my syntax or my file type to HTML. Now all the, the C looks bad, but the HTML looks right. But that, so that's what I'm focused on. So you can do that. Uh, say, for example, if you've got um, you know, a PHP file calling Perl, which calls a C file, which calls you know, something like that, or a C data section that does whatever, or you've got, you know, you can think of any type of thing. You change your file type to that. Um, any questions? Have you gone so far as like getting a, a Firefox plugin that allows you to navigate with Vim key codes or anything else? Well, there is Vimperator, but I never got the hang of it. Anything else? You try and put well, Vim on top of anything else? I, I don't know if you noticed, but the uh, first thing that I did whenever I went to the, the, the wiki page on um, uclug.org, okay. is um, so here's the text box for the HTML, or sorry, the, the wiki markup. Um, if you notice this, and you can use these little buttony things, and, or you can just type text if you like. But I'm a Vim guy, right? So um, I use this uh, Firefox plugin called um, It's All Text. And it does this little button over here. And when I click on that button, it pulls up Vim, it pulls up, it copies that into Vim so that whenever you exit Vim, it will paste it back. So I use Vim whenever I edit wiki pages, for example, Wikipedia, you see the website. I don't know if that answers your question. But Vimperator can. Can go up and down, J K L H H A K L up and down, right, left. Pages, control P, control N. I saw some plugins where some guy got the Vim commands to work in Visual C++ editor. Yep, you can, in, in Visual C++. In fact, I've, I I do this at work. Um, you have the the file up in uh, Visual Studio, and you go to GVim, and you say pull it from Visual Studio, pulls it puts it in there. Now whenever I save it, it pops it back. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do the, uh, the, the build errors <laughs> and all those sorts of things. Um, stack trace. And, uh, that's right. um, I'm also in, in the process right now of um, we have our own special log file at work. You can see here I've got a, a little bit of um, I'm writing my own syntax highlighting file. And, um, so I've got you know the, the number ID, the, the date in green, um, the offset from U and to G, Grinch, um, in different colors and uh, the different syntax. I've got a lot of that when it when it works. Strings are in purple, but um, it's it's not that complicated to do. You just base it on something else that's similar. So um, that's where that is. So, um, so if I it's the FS tab, you can see it's colored. colored. Um, if it's if something's wrong with it, it will uh, give me color wrong. You see this line now that I've erased the zero, it's not finished yet, so there's an error there. And, uh, that's what it is. and comments are uh, light. Blue, or I guess that's not in this number. Any other questions? No? All right, then. Well, um, I guess I've done the announcements. Uh, so, Southeast Lynx Fest, um, June 12th and 13th. Yep. And then PostCon is this weekend, this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, without further ado, Jared, if you'd like to. Uh, Get us started. Jared will be giving us a talk on um, on um, his uh, his wonderful uh, home theater PC. I'm sorry, I'm sick, so I'm not thinking straight. Up. But y'all have fun. I gotta get home to sleep. And I'm gonna watch you when the video comes out. Okay. And I will enjoy it.
Thank y'all for coming. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for driving down. Well, Thanks, Justin. Yeah. 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 I play volleyball. Is this your camera? It's Jerry's camera. Um, do you work in town? No. Nope. Um, what do I do when the bat, when the card runs out? Is there another card? Oh, I don't know. I think it's a, 